Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. Well, the next three days should be hopping here in the Motor City. Sellout crowds are expected all weekend long. And with 39 games left, one of the biggest weekends of the season is officially here. The top two teams in the Central will go at it. Tiger fans, Indian fans are excited because the Tigers and Indians separated by just a game and a half in the Central. Chicago is lurking four games back in the Central as well. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba, glad to have you with us here for the first of what should be a fun three-game series. Ron Allen joins us in a moment. Not only are these the top two teams in the Central, but they are intertwined in another way as well. It was last year the Cleveland Indians decided as Drupal Cabrera would be their starting shortstop of the future. They moved Johnny Peralta to third and then eventually traded him to the Detroit Tigers. Well, he flashed forward to today, and the trade has worked out well for both sides. Cabrera, the starting shortstop, has turned in many highlight reel plays this year for the Indians, and on top of that, has done well offensively, having a career year. Johnny Peralta, both steady with the glove and the bat, batting 311 with 17 homers and 64 RBIs. He also has done some outstanding work for the Detroit Tigers. So two of the top shortstops in the American League going at it here tonight. That's the story from Comerica Park. First pitch starting lineups right around the corner. In the meantime, let's go back to the Call Sam studio now. Here's Mickey York. America Park on a beautiful night for baseball here in the Motor City. The Cleveland Indians are in town, and if the Tigers combine for three or more home runs in this game, bring a copy of the box score to a participating Arby's location tomorrow and get yourself a free small order of curly fries. Here is the starting lineup tonight for the Cleveland Indians, presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Michael Brantley leads it off. He's in left field, followed by Shin Su Chu. He's back in the lineup off the DL in right field. As Drupal Cabrera, the shortstop. 
Travis Hafner, the DH, followed by Carlos Santana. Kosuke Fukudomi has picked up the pace offensively. He's in center field. Laporta, Chisenhall, and Valbuena just called up today. That's your bottom three for the Indians. Our scouting report here tonight on Max Scherzer is presented by Ace Hardware. Eight of the nine batters that will see Max Scherzer here tonight hit from the left side, which is going to be very important for him to use his changeup. He's also going to have to pitch aggressively inside with his fastball in the mid-90s. And if he does both of those things, he should get number 13 tonight, and that would be wins this year. And it would come in an important spot. The Tigers lead by a game and a half over these Cleveland Indians as Michael Brantley settles into the batter's box, and the start of this three-game series is just about ready to get going here as Scherzer steers in for his signal from Alex Avila. It is 82 degrees at game time tonight. Gorgeous evening. Here's the first pitch of the ball game, and it sails outside 1 0 on Michael Brantley. If you're wondering, the left handers are hitting 299 against Max this year, right handers only 238. Brantley has hit safely in his last three, the 1 0 pitch. It's in there a strike as Country Joe West goes up for the right hand 1 1. And Brantley was not healthy when we were in Cleveland last week. He was battling. A sore wrist. Uh, he missed, uh, I, I think, what the last couple of games of the series. He did, correct. Here's the 1 1 offering. Two balls and one strike on Brantley. They are still without their leadoff man, Grady Sizemore, and they're hoping to get him back by September. But they've gotten Shinsu Chu back. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Swing and a miss, 2 and 2. When they do get Grady back, they're going to have a little bit of a log jam in the outfield with Brantley and Fukudome's playing some good baseball, and you know Chu's going to play every day. Manny Acta has done a terrific job this year in leading this Indians team, which not many picked to do anything this year. Is he manager of the year? He's got to get some votes. Let's foul straight back 2 2. Got to get some votes. I don't think there's any doubt. But what a job he has done. Well, He's earned this opportunity. We've talked about to Manny and the fact that he spent a number of years in the minor leagues as a manager before finally getting a chance to come to the big leagues as a manager. A lot like Jim Leland. And again, the 2 2 pitch lifted in the air, left field, shallow. Delman Young coming on, battling the sun as he does every night here at the ballpark. Let's take a peek at the Tigers defensively. It's always presented by. Beaumont Health System. Yes, Young, it's Jackson, it's Bodge in the outfield. It's better meet Peralta, Rayburn, Cabrera in the infield. It's Avila behind the dish. He has caught the last 14 days, but he did have a day off yesterday. And while I have a moment and mentioning Beaumont, I want to send out a shout out to our good friend Gates Brown, who's a little bit under the weather. He's in the hospital right now, so Gates, get well soon. Yeah, Gator, get well. Got to see you back here at the ballpark. Shinsu Chu is standing in there, ball one. Chu batting 246 with five homers. Good pitch that he got Brantley out with. It was the changeup fading away from the left handed swinging Brantley. One ball, one strike. There's that changeup again. And Max has a couple different changeups. One's a circle change that fades away, and then one goes straight down. Has fouled off. 94 on the gun on the outer edge. One and two on Shinsu Chu. Recently off the disabled list. He missed six weeks with a thumb injury. And Chu given time now. As Scherzer takes too long. Max in search of his 13th win of the season. That would establish a career high. Here's the one two. Off the plate two balls two strikes. Scherzer won 12 games last year as well. And Max coming into play tonight. 12 and 7 ERA 4.37. And a bounce in there. Pop up on Avila. Three balls, two strikes. Scherzer in his days with Arizona, the most he won in a single season was nine. That was back in 2009 before the Tigers acquired him. 
He's gone three and two on Chu. And he lost him. Ball four. There's no doubt this is uh, Max's uh, probably biggest start of his professional career. Uh, the Indians are trying to take over first place this weekend, and he's the one guy that can get his team off on the right foot. Well, he's going to face us, Drupal Cabrera, who is batting 291, a career high in the homer and RBI categories. From an offensive standpoint all around, he has probably been the most efficient shortstop this year. J.J. Hardy of the Baltimore Orioles has hit more homers. Ball one. It's going to get away from Avila. That'll advance the runner. So Scoot Chu down to second base and an RBI chance now for Cabrera. At 93 miles an hour, nothing Avila could do with that particular pitch. He was lucky to get glove on it when you miss that badly with your location and the velocity is that high. Yeah, most catchers aren't going to have an opportunity to catch the pitch. Coming into the start in the last three starts combined, Scherzer had walked a total of just two batters over the last 18 innings that he had pitched, but he's walked one already here tonight. And a wave and a miss. One and one on as Grubel Cabrera. Cabrera comes in tonight with an eight game hitting streak. He's been hot and he's been very good this year. One of their best with men in scoring position 333. Lifted back out of play one and two. The Indians are coming off a series in which they took two out of three against the Chicago White Sox. They went to the cell and uh, won that series. It was their first uh, winning series on the road in quite some time. Justin Masterson was on the hill last night for the Indians. He won his 10th game. And the one two. Avila down to block that one. Two balls, two strikes. Max has not been sharp in the early goings here. One out walk to Shinsu Chu, a wild pitch advancing him. And now two and two on as Drupal Cabrera. And a bluff down there at second base. Scherzer had stepped off. It looked like uh, Chu was bluffing a little bit. And you got to keep him close. If nothing else, if there is a base hit by Cabrera, and by you paying a little bit of attention to Chu, he may not get as good a jump or a good secondary lead on the pitch. Bouncing ball right side. Ryan Rayburn has it, and Cabrera is out. Advance two to third base. Two away. And now Scherzer can get out of this inning by getting Travis Hafner. Hafner checks in tonight at 288. Should 11 home runs this year. Cleveland is a team 248 as a ball club in terms of batting average, which is about midway in the American League. Tigers at third. Chew at third base with two outs. Hafner lines one to left field, slicing foul. And apparently, Max more comfortable going from the full windup with the runner on third and two outs. And then going to his stretch. Wow, six for ten against Max in his career, including a home run. Hafner has also been very good with men in scoring position this year, 397. That one busting inside, one ball and one strike on Hafner. 
Hafner hitting in a pretty good spot these days because the guy hitting behind him, although he's only hitting 239 overall, and he may be their hottest hitter right now. That would be Santana. Missed again, two balls, one strike. And I'm sure if it wasn't for Santana, then and Hafter might just get a chance to try it on down to first base. They've got a nice parking spot for him down there. 18 long balls for Santana waiting on deck. Here's the 2 1 pitch. 3 and 1 on Hafter. Travis only 3 out of 15 in that series against the Chicago White Sox that they just completed. Swing and a miss. Three and two. There's a full count pitch. And he got him. Strike three. Hafner is caught looking. Scherzer strikes out Travis Hafner for his first of the game. First inning, Tigers coming to the plate now in the bottom of the first inning. Tigers starting lineup is presented as always by Big Boy. Jackson Bosch Young are your top three. Miguel Cabrera cleaning up. And you've got Victor Martinez and Alex Avila. Your bottom three tonight features Peralta Betemi and then Ryan Rayburn. The Bernstein advantage brings you the scouting report on Josh Tomlin of the Indians. Get the Bernstein advantage. We go to bat for you. He should have a short armor. Doesn't have a full arm swing before delivering the ball toward home plate. But everything that he throws has movement on it, whether it be the cutter, uh, the changeup, the very slow curveball, or the fastball. And he has unbelievable command. He is a strike thrower. Jackson batting 245, leading things off. Breaking ball low and away. One ball and one strike. Lifted in the air. Chu moving over and right. And one gone. Let's take a peek at the Cleveland Indians defensively. It's presented by Tim Hortons. It's Bradley. It's Fukudomi. It's Chu in the outfield. It's LaPorter at first. About one is at second. Osdrubal Cabrera. He's at short. Kissenhall is back at third today. And the talented catcher, Carlos Santana, behind the dish. Here is Brennan Bosch for the Tigers now with one out. Bosch batting 286. 16 home runs this year. Three out of eight in the series just completed against the Minnesota Twins. Here is.
Here's Tomlin's 0 1 pitch. Bouncing ball right side, fielding at first base is Laporta. He'll take it himself, and there are two gone. That's pretty much what Tomlin does. He's not going to overpower you. His fastball very seldom gets to 90 miles an hour, but as we told you, he's only walked 20 coming into play today. 20 base on balls in 154 innings. And the 20 walks, second fewest in the majors behind Brandon McCarthy of the Oakland Athletics. And his whip is awfully low as well. Walks plus hits per innings pitch. He's down there in JV territory. Yeah, well, not quite, but close. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the same city, not on the same block. Yeah, he is. 1.039. JV is sub one. That's popped up. Right side of the infield. He made that look easy, didn't he? El Buena, and it is indeed an easy one, two, three for Josh Tomlin. Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Strength and stability since 1849. Dodge, visit Dodge.com or see your local dealer today. And by Arby's, it's good mood food. Everybody around the ballpark today in a fired up mood. It's a sellout here at the ballpark tonight and a spectacular night in the Motor City. It's going to be a sellout here tonight, you said? Yep, in the next three days, I guess. This whole series, uh, just a few tickets remain. Scherzer back to the hill and he delivers a strike to Carlos Santana. The Tigers will take that if Santana wants to bunt for a base hit the way that he's been swinging the bat in his last 12 games. Santana, good power, has 18 homers. He's swinging away and sends a high fly ball to right field. Bosch under it, one gone. Yeah, that was a changeup that he got Santana to pop up on, and we talked about Scherzer and needing the change today. He got Brantley. To pop up on a changeup. He was the first batter of the game. And then when you start talking about the fourth batter of the game, that was Hafner. He had been featuring really good changeups. He threw him one that he did not swing at. Actually swung right through it. Then he came right back with a fastball and blew him away because he may have been sitting on another changeup. One going here in the second. Here's Fukudome. Koske batting 280. One of the pickups prior to the trading deadline for Cleveland. They got him from the Chicago Cubs. Fukudome only 214 against Tigers pitching this year. Here's the 1 0. However, swinging the bat a whole lot better recently. Five for his last eight. Had a good series against Chicago. There's a strike called one and two on Fukudome. Good slider. Good dip. Two and two. It's 
Here you go in his last 10 games, hitting 302 with three doubles. Rolls over on this one to first base. And Scherzer takes the throw from Cabrera, two gone. Yeah, that's why I was bringing up the point uh, last half inning when we were talking about them possibly getting signs more back. Uh, that means somebody has to get deleted from their everyday lineup, and all three guys are doing fairly well right now. Brantley, Fukudome, and of course, Chu's going to play. Good problem for Manny Acta to have once Sizemore gets back, uh, but then again, it depends on what kind of shape uh, Grady will be in. And the injuries are keeping him out. The knee has been a problem. Here's Laporta. But uh, Sizemore, when healthy, is a game changing type talent. He's that good. Yep. But I don't know if he'll be healthy this year. Yeah, I don't either. Laporta, he's got power and he takes ball one. 11 homers this year. Hit number 11 last night. Got himself an 0 2 breaking ball and drilled it at the sale. Waving a miss, 1 1. That's where you want to pitch him. You want to make him use the big part of the ballpark, which would be center field and right field. Uh, if you throw him something off speed and you hang it, uh, that's where he does most of his damage to the pull field. On one hop to the first baseman who barehands it, Cabrera. An easy play, three unassisted. Hot dog, he got them big old mitts. The second here at the ballpark tonight, the start of a really big three game series here against the Indians. It'll be Cabrera to start things off, then Martinez and Avila. Josh Tomlin made it look really easy in the first inning, a snappy one, two, three frame. The cabby wears out to Cleveland Indians pitching to the tune of a 353 batting average. 15 game hitting streak right now for Miguel. Yeah, but then, of course, there's not many teams that we don't. And speak of those kind of numbers regarding Miguel. Yeah, he pretty much mashes against every team. He does. One ball, one strike. Big flies, too. Tomlin threw just seven pitches in that first inning. That's it. Two and one on Cabrera. Josh Tomlin, 26 years old. He is a native Texan, born in Tyler, Texas. Grew up in a small town named White House, Texas, which is about two hours south of Dallas. There's a strike called, and the count evens now at two and two. For the most part, he keeps the ball out of the middle of the plate. Changes speeds well. Keeps hitters off balance. Disrupts timing. That's exactly what he does. Nothing really for Cabrera to hit. 
driven to center field. Hit hard, but Fukudome is there to make the catch. Hey fans, on a new edition of Tigers Weekly, we go into the vault for hidden telecast footage from 1982. The episode includes a recent interview with former play-by-play -play man Larry Adderley and a conversation with Ted Giolanis, better known as the Chicken, that's what I should have said, who made an appearance <laughs> that season at Tigers Stadium. Tigers Weekly 1982, the time capsule tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. here on Fox Sports Detroit. Giannoulis. Just a <laughs> Giannoulis. Giannoulis, but this is a good effort. The San Diego Chicken. <laughs> Funny dude. The he Chicken. Was, he was. Still is. I guess he's still uh, he's still working. Still stacking them chips, huh? <laughs> yes, he is. I'm not mad at him. <laughs> Here's Martinez. Victor 325 is hit safely in six straight, and he takes a strike. 1-1. One, one. Victor's still not healthy enough to catch. And so Avila has uh, caught uh, pretty much every game since he twisted that knee on the last road trip. Jim was asked uh, the question today about Victor and his knee, and he really didn't give us an indication of when he thinks he might be able to use him again as a catcher. I don't think he knows. Uh, he did say that Omir Santos is back with uh, Toledo now, so he would be available if they ran into some trouble, but. They're going to roll the dice a little bit here. There's a line drive caught by Belbuena, who's playing in short right field. How about that? Had he played perfectly. Yeah, you can see where he starts. And Victor, not necessarily a pull hitter, although he has been pulling a quite a lot of balls lately. Two gone. That was the Jim Tomey type shift. First time I've seen that shift employed with Victor, too. Me, too. Here's Alex Avila. 298 for Avila. But if you think about the way that Victor's running, it's a smart play by Manny Acton. Yeah, even if he hits the ball on the ground, we've got a chance to get him. One ball, no strikes on Avila. Six for 10. In a series against the Minnesota Twins. What an August he has had. Here's the 1 0. Two balls, no strikes. Tomlin has done something that no other rookie pitcher has ever done in the Indians' history. His first 36 career appearances, 2010 and 11, at least five innings pitched in every single game. Pretty amazing stretch. The 2 0. 2 and 1 on Alex. Santana flashing the signals. The 2 1. Rip foul down the right field line. You can see that in the month of August, the Vila has really come alive after a slow month of July. 346 in June, 197 in July, and back up to 426 with 11 ribbies. Avila's average of 426 in August is the highest in the American League. In fact, there are only a couple of other guys that are hitting over 400 this month. Torrey Hunter, Derek Jeter, and Yorvita Alba, the other three. And you've got meet Avila in that mix as well. It's been quite a month. Trying to keep it going for Johnny Peralta. Avila's average for the most part has hovered around 300. We talked about that month of July in which he dipped a little bit, but his month of August has gotten it back to where he had been. Been smiling a lot this year. And Tomlin's 3 2. Pulled a second on a soft line. And Valbuena handles it. Tigers again go one, two, three, six up, six down against Tomlin.
but not all the guys were out playing golf or playing video games. A few of them were actually here at the ballpark yesterday supporting the third annual Keeping Kids in the Game event. It's actually the Detroit Tiger Foundation signature fundraiser, and there were more than 500 people here yesterday. They got a great tour of the clubhouse. They got to be out here on the ball field and, of course, meet some of their favorite players. We caught up with Miguel Cabrera at the event as well. Yeah, I think that's more expressing, you know. Uh, I think you, when you give something back to the people, I think, like, they appreciate, like, a lot, you know. So if we get a chance to do that, you know, you got to keep doing and hopefully it works for everybody. You know, Miguel is really one of the biggest guys in baseball right now, but he understands the importance of giving back. They also had about 200 sick kids and their family members here from Children's Hospital and Mott Hospital yesterday just to kind of get out of the hospital and really experience some good stuff here at the ballpark. And Miguel and uh, Carlos Guillen were here yesterday along with Brendan Bosch to kind of share in the moment with them. Rod and Mario, I'll send it back to you. All right, Shannon, that in itself is good stuff. Uh, Rod, you know how... Uh the the off days late in the season how much golden they are for these players to come out and uh, really support a good charity that's awesome outstanding job by everyone that attended and a good time I'm sure uh, was had all of yesterday here at the ballpark good to see the Tigers players involved Luis Valbuena the batter with one out after the line out by Lonnie Chisenhall Scherzer are working quickly the 0 1 one ball and one strike Neither team has a hit in this game. The Indians did have a walk and got a man to third, but they couldn't score him back in the first. You know, we're starting to see more and more managers that like Manny Act to run lots of left handed bats out there against guys like uh, Scherzer and also Porcello. The numbers are kind of jaded to the right handed side with both guys. They do very nice work against righties, but they struggle against left handers. But today, so far, Max real good against the left handers because he's gotten to that change up. And the chains up's been a good pitch for him so far. Here's the one two. Well, Buena hits the ground ball to second. Right on cue. And Rayburn throws him out two away. Another change piece. And so far, Max is doing some really good work. That's seven straight, he's retired. He's going to bring up Brantley. And Michael Brantley takes the first pitch 91% of the time. 91% of the time, the only other player in the American League that takes more than he does is Bobby Abreu of the Los Angeles Angels. And Jim was talking about that uh, a little bit today. I wonder where Mauer is on that list because he seems to take it a lot. Uh, he's got to be in the top five. Yeah. There's but Jim also strike. said what Brantley will do is on occasion, there's runners in scoring position. He kind of. He changes, so there's patterns that guys uh, have, obviously. The 0 1. Old foul, 0 2 on Brantley. What do you think of this young man? He's still only 24 years old, came over in a deal a couple of years ago. Well, I'm finally uh, glad they've given him a chance to play every day because when he came up a couple of years ago in September, he was really good, but then that following year, last year, uh, they really didn't give him many reps at all. Here's the 0 2. The, the Indians, like the Tigers, have received contributions from some folks that maybe weren't being counted on to do quite as much as they have, and that's always critical. And that's one of the reasons why they're in the hunt as we speak. A game and a half out of first place. Seven home runs for Brantley is a career high. Avila blocks it, one ball, two strikes. Michael's dad, Mickey, played in the big leagues quite a while. Former hitting coach as well. Michael says he talks to his dad every single night after the ball game. Get his input. That makes it tough on the current hitting coach, Bruce Fields. No disrespect to Mickey, who is the dad of Michael, but no one knows Michael's swing better than his dad does. But when you have a hitting coach, and every now and then the hitting coach tries to get you to do certain things. Every now and then that young player is reluctant in the listening because dad's the one that's taught him everything. Absolutely. I always wondered about that. The 2 2 slice toward left, and that ball looks like trouble. It is. It's going to roll to the corner. He'll dig it up. Delman Young picks it up, but it's going to be a two out, two base hit for Michael Brantley. I'm sure dad taught him that swing. 
A nice little 95 mile per hour fastball and he did exactly what you want to do with it. You don't want to try to pull this ball. It's tailing away from you and he was able to lace it and slice it and down in that left field corner. 23rd double of the year now for Brantley. First hit of the game for either side that'll bring up Shin Su Chu. Who walked in his only at bat. It also stops that string of seven consecutive retired by Scherzer. Ball one outside. For the most part, you want to stay out of fastball counts with Sin Su Chu. He's got really quick hands and he loves to hit fastballs. And uh, he's done his fair share of damage against Max as well. Yikes. 583. The 1 0. Chopper to the second baseman on the backhand, Rayburn. Inning over. No runs, they get a double. Strand the man. So far, so good for Max Scherzer. Detroit Lions season tickets. See the Bears on Monday night and the Super Bowl champion Packers on Thanksgiving Day for just $40 per game. Call 313-262-2011 or visit DetroitLions.com. Not too many seats to be had here tonight at the ballpark as we go to the bottom of the third pitching duel so far in this one. The Tigers and Indians big three game series here as we wind down the month of August. Standing room only SRO here at the ballpark. Johnny Peralta leads it off and looks at ball one up high. Peralta and then Bedemit and then Rayburn. Tomlin's 1 0. 2 0. Johnny 4 for 11 in that series just completed against the Minnesota Twins. Here's Tomlin's 2 0 pitch. Hit hard and over the glove of the shortstop Cabrera. And Johnny has a leadoff single. First hit of the game for the Tigers. He celebrate Fiesta Tigres days tomorrow when the Tigers host the Indians. At 7.05, pregame festivities include live music and dancing, and the first 10,000 fans receive Kenneth to Tigre playing cards. For tickets, call 866-66-TIGER or check it out online, tigers.com. Leadoff man on now for Wilson Bedemy. Batting 288. And he strokes one toward left center field. On the move is Brantley. Running catch for Michael Brantley. Peralta on his horse trying to get back to first. And he's going to be out. That's a double play. Boy, that thing looked like for sure it was going to head to the gap and into the... Uh, the outfield there and hit the wall, but Brantley cut it off. That's why Johnny Peralta was doubled off on that particular play. Johnny Peralta did not think this ball was going to be caught. Nice job by Brantley getting there and then getting the ball back into the cutoff man. 
Johnny Peralta was all the way around second base, which meant he had to retouch second base and then try to get back to first base, and he just couldn't do it. So Tomlin gets some help from his defense there. 7 6 3. After the catch was made by Brantley. Now they play good defensively behind Tomlin because he's always around the plate. We told you earlier he doesn't walk anybody, so there's always contact because he doesn't strike out many either. Therefore, as a defender, you're always ready for a ball to be hit to you. That really does make a difference, doesn't it? I mean, we, we say it a lot, and then it sounds like a cliche, but it really is true. No question. Guys aren't on their heels when Tomlin's on the mound. Now the 1-1. Rayburn shoots that one foul down the first baseline. One and two on Ryan Rayburn. Batting 230 this year with 11 long balls. Seems like every time Bedemit puts the ball in play, he puts the ball in play with authority. Yeah, that ball looked like a gapper. Bedemit batting over 300 in a Tigers uniform. Ball high, 2 2 on Rayburn. Wilson getting a chance to play tonight at third base. Ground ball to short. Right there is Cabrera. And Rayburn is out by a step. No runs, one hit, nobody left. Baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by AT&T and by your neighborhood Spartan stores. For locations, check out TurnToSpartan.com. Hey, by the way, you can vote for your Tigers McDonald's Player of the Game presented tonight by the Quarter Pounder with Cheese using your cell phone. Text Tigers followed by a space on the player's uniform number to 37338 or simply vote online at FoxSportsDetroit.com if you'd like. Scherzer back to the hill as Grubel Cabrera leads it off. He lifts the first pitch into right field. Bosch backing up. Edge of the track to make the catch. Scherzer has thrown quite a few changeups, as we pointed out, he will need to do, but he's sort of gotten into that point of where he's throwing too many of them. By the way, this game is available tonight in crystal clear, stunning high definition on Fox Sports Detroit HD, sponsored by Xfinity from Comcast. And what I mean by that is one or two of these left handers will go up there and the entire at bat will sit on nothing but change up. So he has to continue to mix in all of his pitches. Hafner, a strikeout victim, his first time up. Scherzer's 0 1 pitch. Hafner takes one right down the middle of the plate at 94. And it's 0 2.
elevated but outside of the strike zone one ball two strikes on Travis. After his 10th all time on the Indians home run list 186 home runs in his career. He's still a lot of grand slams too. I think he has like 12. That's rolled foul. Hit five or six of those in one year. Yeah, that's right. Well, let me see. Half. Minute. 12 grand slams. In fact, he hit one in July against Toronto of this year. Injuries have dogged him the past couple of seasons. Half of those still very much feared in the middle of their lineup. Batting cleanup. Here's the one two pitch. Swing and a miss, and Scherzer dispatches Travis Hafner. It's good location with the off speed pitch. It's down, it's away, and it has Hafner fooled, and he swung right over the top of it. This Indians team will strike out quite a bit. In fact, they lead the American League. Their offense has whiffed 940 times this year as a team. Santana is 0 for 1. Max working with a nice rhythm now after really uh, a lengthy first inning. Walked a batter through a wild pitch, but got through that. One ball, one strike. Also 8 of 14 in first pitch strikes so far tonight. And the 1-1. One, one. Boy, did they give up the third base line for Santana. They are way off the line defensively. He has a lot of room down there in that corner should he be late on a fastball. But apparently their scouting report tells them that's where he hits the ball. And a strike on the outer edge. 2-2. Santana is on pace for 24 home runs. He has hit 18. His rookie season cut short in a collision at home plate last year. Popped up. Left side of the infield. Metamede is there. One, two, three inning for Max. We go to the bottom of the fourth. How many times in history did the Indians and Tigers finish first and second in league or divisional standings? That is our AT&T trivia question tonight. These two teams have been around a long time. How many times have they finished one and two? And it may not be as many times as you think. But that's your question tonight. 
They are one and two right now in the standings. Jackson leading it off. He'll be followed by Bosch and then Young. There's a bouncing ball left side. Cabrera ranging right. And Jackson very nearly beat it out. One gone. Back and forth we go on this lead in the Central Division. Indians, of course, based on their quick start early, Rod, I think surprised a lot of people, but the Tigers, after finding their legs, have come on. Yep, they have. Indians now four games over 500. First time they've been there in quite some time. Bosch for one with a ground out. Straightens him up with a pitch inside, 1-0. Oh for one tonight for Brennan a bounce out back in the first then a 285 average Rips one foul to right field. Oh that's going to hurt. He <laughs> didn't even come away with the ball he's hurting right now. He tried to catch that yes he did barehanded. The one one. One and two on Bosch. 315 over his last 59 games. Bosch much more consistent in his sophomore season as opposed to his rookie year last year. And the one two. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. First strike out of the ballgame for Tomlin. Two outs. That'll bring up Delvin Young. So Delvin now settling into his new surroundings. Five for 14 as a Tiger. Of course, he homered in his first at bat as a Tiger against his former team, the Twins. And he drives this one high in the air to right field. Chu going back to the track, and he'll haul it in. One, two, three inning for Tomlin. He's been economical tonight. And celebrate. Top of the fifth inning, game one of the series. Let's check back in with uh, Shannon Hogan. Shannon? That's right, Mario. You know, a lot of times when we're in Jim Leland's office, he does not want to talk about the lineup. But you guys were there today. He was actually very honest with the media today and really what his mindset is when he's putting together a lineup, especially people wanted to know about second and third base. You might notice today, Betamy is in at third base. And the reason why Skip says is he's 7 for 15 against this pitcher tonight and so that's really the offense was really the breaking point for him he said 
if, for example, him and Don Kelly had the same success on offense, he would go to who was the best defensive player. So there is some method to his madness. I know a lot of people are wondering why he does the things he does. And also, baseball has really changed over the past few years. So much information is available to the skipper. And I want you guys to explain a little bit to the viewers about some of the numbers that he crunches. All right, Shannon. Yeah, indeed. We were in his office today, Rod, and he was talking about that. I mean, there are so many factors that go into how his decisions are made. Who is on the mound? Who is the better defender? Who's got the numbers? And I think Jim's not really a big numbers guy, but there are some, some numbers that he does deem important. Betamid almost made him look like a genius in his first at bat. Had it not been for the spectacular play by Brantley in left field, that's a double, and Peralta scores on that play. So, as you mentioned, Jim's not huge on numbers. He's more of a gut type manager, but every now and then if the numbers are overwhelming. You have to pay attention to them. Absolutely. And, and there are times where the numbers are overwhelming. And so Leland will kind of lean that way. But he also deems defense to be very important as well. So if the numbers are kind of even between these two guys, he said, I'll go with the guy that has a better glove. Something else that Jim didn't tell us is that the fact that Scherzer pretty much is a fly ball pitcher. He doesn't throw as many ground balls as let's say Porcello or Brad Penny. When those guys are on the mound, he might go to a different defender. No doubt. In the infield, whether it be Santiago or whether it be a Kelly at third and replace Betamit and Rayburn because he's anticipating more ground balls in that game. Here's a 2 2. And it just missed. Fugadome, Laporta, and Chisholm Hall here in the fifth inning. No score in this one. Here's a 3 2, and it's fouled back out of play. Fukudome is 0 for 1 with the bounce out. Well, Scherzer, no doubt, is considered a strikeout slash fly ball pitcher, but he has gotten his share of ground balls tonight. He got one in the first, two more in the second. He got two in the third inning. And another ground ball here. Right to the shortstop, Peralta. One away, time for a game break. We go back to the studio. We check in with Mickey York. All right, Mick, thank you. Here we're in the fifth inning, and we're still looking for our first run. Tomlin and Scherzer have each given up just one hit. And Jim Hendry, the former general manager of the Chicago Cubs, was let go today by his bosses. Here is Laporta. He had a pretty good run there. I think he took over in 96, I want to say. There. In the 90s. Yeah, early on, they did well. But then they just... The last few years, just a lot of different things have gone on there, and they just haven't you know, really been moving in the right direction, at least according to management. Here's the 1 0. Foul back 1 1. Well, the Carlos Zambrano saga probably didn't help this year either. Not at all. We've gone through a lot of different managers, lots of different coaches. Here's the 1 1 to Laporta. 1 and 2. And Laporta now is in his third year with the Indians, and I think they're probably still waiting, aren't they, for him to kind of take off? Well, they're just hoping that uh, they, he could find some consistency. He's got some power. Uh, he's had a position change. He's now their first baseman. They feel like he's in the best health this year that he's ever been since they've had him, but you're absolutely right. Yeah, they'd like to see him blossom. That'll go foul. He was traded for CC Sabathia. And he was supposed to be the guy that was going to hit 30 and drive in 100 every year. Hit a lot of home runs in college. And, uh, so they projected him to be a big home run hitter in professional baseball. Popped up foul back out of play. Alex was asking for that 97 mile per hour fastball up. And Scherzer didn't get it up where Alex wanted it. And that allowed Laporta to get a piece of it. 
If you're just joining us, LaPorter is the only right-handed batter in the lineup tonight against Max Scherzer. Two and two. Chisenhall waiting on deck. Rolled foul. Seventy two now for Max. He threw twenty three of those in that first inning. And the two two. Laporta is zero for one with a ground out. And he's had consecutive eight pitch at bats now, making Scherzer work. Actually, Fukudomi and Laporta in this inning. There's a soft liner over the glove. The Peralta into left field, a base hit. After the game, stay tuned for Tigers Live for reaction, analysis, and highlights from tonight's game. Tigers Live from the Call Sam Studios and at the ballpark here on Fox Sports Detroit. And after this, stick around for even more post game coverage on Tigers Live Extra Innings. So the Indians have just their second hit in this game. Lonnie Chisenhall will step in. Speaking of guys they're very high on, Chisholm Hall regarded as one of their top prospects. Called up on June 27th from their Triple A team in Columbus. And he pops this one up. Shallow left field. Delman Young comes charging in. On a nightly basis, I think Delman can't wait for that second or third inning to roll around because the sun finally departs that field out there in left. No doubt about that. It's not fun playing left field here early in a game. It doesn't need the sunglasses now. Two gone. Here is Valbuena. How about Delman? He went from a team, the Minnesota Twins, where he was batting eighth every single day, to coming to this team with a good offense, batting third every day. In front of Cabrera, did you see the smile on his face when he <laughs> showed up the first day? You already know. <laughs> And that was one of the comments he made. He says, I went from batting eighth in front of Nishioka, you know, the shortstop of the Minnesota Twins, to batting third here on a first place club in front of the big fella. Well, common sense would tell you he would get some pretty good pitches to hit when you bat in front of that guy. Here's the 0 1. One ball, one strike on Valbuena. Third different stick with the big club down at Triple A. 16 home runs for Valbuena. Wave and a miss. One and two. Best changeup he's had all year. And I think the reason why you know, the changeup has been as effective. Is because he knew coming into this game that he had to throw it and he had to throw it often. And he hasn't hung many of those. Just about every last one has been fading away from the left handed bats. Seems like he's thrown that pitch a lot tonight. Taking a page out of Verlander's book. 46% off speed. And that's with a 97 mile per hour fastball. Which got as high as 98 in his last start late in the game in Baltimore. Gutsy performance you know, that day by Max. Got off to a slow start. But he hung around long enough to get the win. Two and two on Luis Valbuena. Bounced out to second, his first at bat.
swing and a miss. Down he goes. 95 that time, his third strikeout of the game. Tigers baseball tonight is presented by Bell Tire. Baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Bell Tire. Get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. And by Nissan's bottom line sales event. Visit choosenissan.com or see your local dealer today. Sparkling night here tonight at the ballpark. Comerica Park, the scene for game one in this three game series. Game and a half separating the Tigers and the Indians. And right now it's scoreless. We go to the bottom of the fifth. We have had gorgeous weather uh, this entire homestand. July was so oppressively hot at points, but uh, August been really nice. 0 and 2 on Cabrera. Miguel to be followed by Martinez and then Avila. The only Tigers hit was a leadoff single by Peralta in the third, but he eventually got doubled up. And Tomlin has faced the minimum through four innings tonight. Believe he went. There is no appeal. One and two the count. Tomlin has the ability to throw that baseball wherever he wants to. He has not made many mistakes in the strike zone here so far tonight. Two and two. Tomlin was promoted to the big leagues last season after winning eight at Triple A last year. And had a good debut with Cleveland last season. Won 14 games a couple of years ago in the minor leagues. And he has arrived at this level, pitching well. The 2 2 lifted back out of play. Cabrera fly to center field back in the second, 0 for 1. Miguel a 15 game hitting streak. Protects the plate. 2 2 the count stays. Tomlin looks cool, calm, and collected out there. Yes, he does. Staring in against one of the most feared hitters in the American League. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Ooh. Three and two. Ooh. Have to have a good eye to take that one. Driven to center. Base hit. Three two single to center for Cabrera. 
Let's take a look at how Tomlin attacks uh, one of the best hitters in the American League. That would be Miguel Cabrera. It's our bell tire. Pitch by pitch. Miguel swinging kind of wild early in this count. But when he falls behind no balls and two strikes, that's when his antennas go up. And that's when he starts to give you a quality at bat. Fouling off good pitch after good pitch until finally getting something right down the middle from Tomlin and taking the base hit up the middle. 16 game hitting streak down for Cabrera. That was an eight pitch at bat. And really the only hittable pitch he got was the last one. Tomlin had come into the sitting having thrown 40 pitches through four innings. If Albuena, the second baseman, was playing about 10 feet deep on the outfield grass. Last time Victor was up, but not this time. It's a double play situation, so he's playing. His regular position at second. Are they playing behind Caddy? They're yucking it up. They've been having a lot of fun. <laughs> no, what's so funny? But something's awfully funny. Look at the board. Somebody said something. <laughs> <laughs> Inside 2 and 0. Oh. And chances are it was Cabrera. He is a funny man. A couple of days ago, when the team acquired Delman Young, when Brennan Bosch showed up to the clubhouse, he told Brennan, Pack your stuff. You're out of here. <laughs> we got a new outfielder. Nice. <laughs> They're best friends, though. <laughs> Delman didn't buy it, though. Did he? <laughs> no, no, no. He was I talking mean, to Brennan. The Bosch didn't buy no, it. No, no, no. <laughs> he walked around sulking for a little while. Because <laughs> they're buddies. <laughs> and that's, that's the kind of fun that they have. The 2 0. Ooh, we had a rip, 2 and 1. Of course, Brennan wasn't feeling all that well anyway because he's walking around with a sore thumb. And your best buddy's telling you to get up out of here. <laughs> we got somebody that can play. One thing we do know about Cabrera, he just loves to keep it loose. When he first got here, Jim had to slow him down a little bit as far as how much fun he was having on the baseball field. Remember that? I do indeed. I absolutely remember that he thought maybe he was giving wrong, giving out the wrong impression and having a little bit too much fun but it's such a part of his personality and then he started hitting and Jim said you just do whatever you want to do <laughs> waving a miss 2 2 on Martinez Victor lined out to the second baseman Valbuena his first time that last pitch from Tom at 77 miles an hour real slow breaking ball. Perfect example of a guy that knows how to pitch. You don't have to have a 95 mile per hour fastball to be successful up here. It's not even breathing hard. And the 2 2 in the air to center. Fukudome going back. They'll run it down, and Cabrera has to retreat. Wrong part of the ballpark. One out. Bring up Avila. How critical do you think this series is perceived by both of these teams? Because they still have, what, after this one, eight more against each other. You still have another month to go. Well, I think it's critical for Jim and his bunch because they don't want to deal with the negative talk that might come if they lose this series or get swept. Right. And if you're Manny Acta on his team, I mean, you've stayed in this thing a long, long time. And if you somehow get swept here or take lose two out of three, then you might leave here with a bad taste in your mouth. So uh, it's big for both teams for different ways. Manny Acta made the comment uh, yesterday before their game in Chicago. Yes, these are big games, but if I think of them as big a games as you guys do, I'm going to have a heart attack before the year's over. <laughs> Yeah, I think most managers feel that way because as fans we tend to put a little bit more emphasis on games than maybe we should. But Texas showed the Angels the last four days how important a series can be even at this point in the month of August winning three of four and opening up a fairly good sized lead. Oh and one on Avila. World foul Owen oh two. Tigers tomorrow have Fister against David Huff and then Porcello and Ubaldo Jimenez. 
to wrap it up on Sunday, the latest acquisition. And the Tigers saw him. He made his first start in the American League. Well, what second start? Second start, first home American. start. First home start against Detroit. Pitched well that day. Missed it outside. Tomlin tried to thread the needle out there. Couldn't do it though. They've got the makings of a pretty nice uh, rotation as they move forward with Tomlin, Ubaldo Jimenez, Masterson. If they can keep Carmona straightened out, that's a pretty nice front four. Not bad at all. And this is a Cleveland team that has been pitching well. In the air toward left, long run for Brantley. Still coming. Sliding in foul ground to make the catch. Good concentration. Especially knowing that wall is coming up on you. That's why he slid this way. Just a normal slide, but real good concentration. The head doesn't move, it doesn't jar. And therefore able to make that catch and make it looking rather easy. Two gone for Johnny Peralta. Singled back in the third, later was erased on a double play. The 0 1. Breaking ball hammered toward left field hooking and it'll go foul just a smidge out in front of that pitch. Oh and two. Scherzer has done some good work tonight. Both pitchers have allowed just two hits. Neither team has a run. And the 0 2. One ball, two strikes on Peralta. Tomlin, a 19th round pick back in 06 of the Indians, made his march through the minor leagues. We mentioned he won 14 games a couple of seasons ago, put himself on the map. Bouncing ball foul. Do you know there has not been one stolen base this year with him on the mound? The whole season? The whole season. Really? Not only has there not been a steal, but there hasn't been an attempt. He does have one pickoff. So apparently that means he gets the ball to the plate in pretty good shape. Super quick. I mean, he's a starting pitcher. I mean, he's pitching five innings every time he goes out there. There are some fast runners in the American League. Absolutely. A pretty amazing stat, but it just kind of gives you the idea of him doing the little things, throwing strikes, keeping hitters off balance, keeping the running game in check. And that's how you win up here. Crowd trying to get into this one. It's a sellout crowd here tonight. And the 2 2 fouled away. There was only two steals against Tomlin last year. Two of five. Wilson Bedamine waiting on deck. The Tigers really not considered a, a running team, but against some teams that do have some jackrabbits out there, that can come in handy. Lifted to right field. This will be routine for Chu and inning over. No runs, one hit, one left, five in the books tonight. Game one is still scoreless.
question tonight how many times in history have the Indians and Tigers finished first and second in the league or divisional standings only three times in history believe it or not that's it and these two teams have been around a long time 2007 the last time they finished one and two there's a possibility it could happen again this year and it's uh, seeming like a good possibility each, each passing day Brantley leads it off against Scherzer. 07 looked like they were going to get to the World Series that year. Yep, but sure they did. kind of stubbed their toe in the American League Championship Series. Here's a comparison of the starters tonight. 64 pitches for Tomlin. And that was after a, uh, a lengthy fifth inning. Otherwise, he'd be in uh, really good shape. Brantley to be followed by Chu and then Cabrera. Tomlin with the jacket on as he hopes his offense can get him some runs. In the air toward right center field. Jackson is on the move. Austin with that big quick burst and he gets there quickly. Yeah, that has uh, too much air underneath it. And Jackson's going to run all those down. How about those plays Ben Revere made here a couple of days ago? Really impressive. Really. And they were both against uh, Delman Young, weren't they? Yep. Comcast is checking in, telling us that Scherzer has touched 97 in this contest so far. Shinsu Chu is 0 for 1 with a walk. Max has got some nice stuff here tonight. Real nice slider. Best changeup I've seen him with all year. And 97 is nothing to sneeze at either. Back up the middle into center field base hit. Chu is on with one out. Third hit tonight for Cleveland. Tigers have two hits. I would not be shocked to see Manny turn Chu loose here and see if he could steal a base. And this is kind of getting into the area where both of these managers might have to. Uh, do something to help their clubs along against both starters because both starters are doing very well. Avila is at 24 percent of throwing runners out this year. Chu, one of those guys that can steal you 20 a year. He's done it a few times. Hasn't been healthy all year this year. Cabrera is 0 for 2. Ground out. Fly ball. One ball, no strikes on as Grubel. He's been on a roll. He's hit safely in 17 of his last 18 games. Aggressive throws to first base. We've seen Max have in a little bit. He is uh, typically a quick spin and then lob over to first. Trying to keep Chu close at first base. There's another one. Shinsu has 11 steals in 16 attempts. And here's where Jim might pitch out. And to help Max out if he's convinced to choose running. Strike called 1 1. Outside. Two balls in one strike. Here's the type of season as Dribble is having this year. Only three players in the American League are leading their team in average homers, RBIs, and runs. 
And Cabrera is one of them. It's pretty good. Bautista. And Kadai are the other two. One out single by Chu. We're in the sixth inning of a scoreless game. Game one in this three game series. Swing and a miss. Two and two on us, Dribble Cabrera. Travis Hafner waiting on deck. Game and a half separates these two teams in the standings. Both have. 58 losses. The Tigers have three more victories. The Indians have what? Three double headers coming up? Three of them. So down the stretch, they'll be playing a lot of games. Here's the 2 2 with the runner going. Swing and a miss. Throw down to second. Tag save. Whoa. Sure, she thought he had it. So did Avila. Cabrera strikes out. Chu swipes the bag. Chu had a pretty good jump. A wonderful exchange to the throwing hand by Avila. Very accurate throw and a very quick tag applied uh, by Johnny Peralta. And he got him on the hit, but is the foot on the bag? Boy, is that a close Ooh. play. Fox Mode will tell you. I don't know. What do you think? It was close. Yeah, it was real close. So now half to our chance to drive in a run with two outs. Ball one. That left foot might have been on the bag. As he was applying the tag. Hafner is 0 for 2. He's had a tough night so far. Two strikeouts against Max. A little bit outside. Two balls and no strikes. Two eighty six for Hafner. And again, he came in 397 with men in scoring position. Trying to pick up Chu with the game's first run. He's ahead 2 0. Oh. And it's 2 and 1. Max would not give in behind in the count. Balls one strike if Hafner were to reach. Santana waiting on deck. Max in his last start against the Orioles struck out 10, which was a season high. And in fact, the only time this series reached double figures. And four strikeouts in tonight's ball game. And the 3 1. On the ground of the second baseman. And Rayburn throws him out. Again, the threat is over. No runs, one hit, one left. Bottom of the six coming up.
line for the Coors Light Freeze. Cam Wilson better made hit a seed in the left center field. Looked like it was going to be a double. And he was going to drive in a run. And Peralta thought as much himself. He was all the way around second base. He had to regroup and try to get back. But a perfectly done relay to Cabrera, the shortstop, to Laporta, the first baseman. And they got the double play. Coors Light Freeze. Cam always brought to you by your cross group Coors Light. So we go to the bottom of the sixth inning and this one's still looking for our first run of the game. Tomlin back to the hill facing Wilson Betemi to lead things off. And Betemi takes one right down the middle. Strike one. Wilson then Rayburn and then Jackson. No runs three hits for the visitors from Cleveland. No runs two hits for the Tigers. And Betemi fouls this one away. 0 oh and 2. The only Tiger hits tonight, both singles, both leading off an inning. Peralta in the third, and then Cabrera in the fifth. Tomlin and Scherzer tonight have been outstanding. Kicking off this three game series. Breaking ball and a wave and a miss. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. The last pitch at 70 miles an hour. Tomlin gets his second strikeout of the night. Yikes. Way out in front. 11 fly ball outs for Tomlin tonight. Everybody's out in front of everything he throws. Line to right field. There's a base hit for Rayburn. Third Tigers hit of the game. Hey fans, the Kansas City Royals visit Comerica Park in a four-game series August 29th through September 1st. Tickets are on sale now at 866-66-TIGER or online at tigers.com. Here's Austin Jackson. AJ tonight, fly ball, ground out. Quick throw back. See if Jackson's uh, going to tip. Jackson has 12 sacrifices, which is fourth in the American League, but there's one out, so that wouldn't be the situation here, would it? He could bump for a base hit for sure. Can. Each team with three hits. That's it. That's how strong the pitching has been tonight. And there's a strike on the inside part of the plate on one. This guy is just moving the ball around inside outside up down on the black pitching. I guess the best way to describe it doesn't throw awfully hard. No doubt about that. Tim Belcher their pitching coach. Has to be happy with what he has seen not only tonight but really all season from Tom. High fly ball hit a ton to left field. Brantley going back to the track to the wall and gone. Austin Jackson a two run shot. And it's scoreless no longer. AJ hits his sixth. Look two seam fastball that really didn't do a whole lot. It was right down the middle. Jackson got that foot up and down. And he hit up against a really firm front side. And he was able to generate a tremendous amount of bat speed coming through the strike zone. That's the only mistake Tomlin has made today. And Jackson made him pay. The Tigers strike first tonight on the one out two run shot by Austin Jackson. That's their fourth hit of the game as well. Happy, happy Joy Joy right now on the bench. Bosch looks at a strike. One and one. 21st home run of the year allowed by Tomlin. A team high. That one floats in for a strike. And again, it's 70 miles an hour. And hit four home runs all of last year, so he has a career high. 
this season. Tomlin does not appear to be phased, but he is trailing now 2 0. Here's the 2 2. Bosch pops this one up. Shallow right, Valbuena, the second baseman. Two gone. It was Rayburn with the single, it was Jackson with the homer. Delman Young. Ball one to Delman. Oh for two tonight for Young. Pop up fly ball. Swing and a miss. One and one. One and two. Two two on Delvin Young. Cabrera waiting on deck. Tigers have a 2 0 lead on the home run by Jackson. His first since July the 27th. High towering fly ball left field. This ball is hit well. Brantley going back to the track, to the wall to make the catch. Just got under it to end the inning. However, the Tigers take the lead, and they do so, getting the homer from the leadoff man. Jackson goes deep. Two nothing in favor of the Tigers. Let's check in now with Shannon Hogan, who has more on Al Albuquerque. Shannon, and that's right. He's probably one guy you're not going to see warming up here in the bullpen tonight. I did actually talk to Kevin Rand, who's the Tigers' head trainer, before the game today. Al Albuquerque is still on that special seven-day disabled list after being hit in the head by the ball in batting practice a week ago in Baltimore. He does have a little soreness on that spot where he was hit, but he did meet with a specialist today to go through some drills and kind of see how he's progressing. They said he's progressing well, but still is having some reflex things with his hands. So they're going to keep him on that disabled list for at least another week. Mario and Rod, I'll send it back to you. All right, Shannon, thank you. Better safe than sorry with uh, concussion-like symptoms. And uh, we're seeing more and more players now taking a little while to get back. And we're also seeing precaution uh, taking with guys that have the concussions. They put Denard Spann on the disabled list. He was here just a couple of, well, yesterday, a yeah. couple of days ago, and with cushion with symptoms lingering. Santiago has taken over at second base. Scherzer pitching with the lead for the first time tonight as we go to the seventh. Carlos Santana leading it off, and Kosuke Fukudome and Matt Laporta. Austin Jackson's two run shots. 
Makes it two nothing Detroit. There's a strike call two and one. Santana tonight fly ball pop up. Now the two one offer. And it's in there a strike two two on Santana. Scherzer is about to throw his 100th pitch of the evening. Fouled straight back at 95. And he drilled Avila. A couple of rocky innings, the first and the fifth, and I guess you could call them rocky innings only by pitch count standards. Didn't give up any runs in either one of those frames. That's right. Here's the 2 2 pitch. A little bit outside, 3 2. Santana, one of those guys that you really can't set up. So if you go into a game and if you're Scherzer and you think you can throw him this and then maybe get back to this a little later on, no, 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 no. Forget about that. <laughs> because he is swinging at everything but the kitchen sink usually. He does have really good plate discipline. Don't get me wrong, he walks quite a bit. But as far as swinging that stick and trying to set him up and decide what his strengths and his weaknesses are, no one really knows that yet. Well, there has been some word about how they want him to cut down his swing a little bit with two strikes in the count, make it a little bit shorter. He has a 3 2 count here. And you're right, he does walk quite a bit. He pulls that one into right center base hit. Well, the leadoff man is on here for Cleveland in the seventh. Back to the studio we go with the game break. Here's Mickey York. All right, Mick, thanks. We'll keep our eyes on that one. Chicago is certainly not out of the race by any stretch of the imagination. Right now, the Tigers separated by a game and a half with Cleveland. Chicago four back. Here is Fukudome. Ball one to Kosuke. Fukudome, since being acquired by the Indians, hitting 280 with his new club. He was with the Cubs and acquired on July the 27th as the Tigers' bullpen starts to stir. Gene Lamont making the call. And double barrel action down in that bullpen. Phil Cope, Ryan Perry. Fukudome played five years in Japan with Chunichi. Twice he hit over 30 home runs in a season in Japan. Chunichi Dragons. He played in that town, didn't he? I sure did. That's where they made the uh, movie Mr. Baseball, too. Really? Yeah, Chunichi Dragons. Here's the one two swing and a miss Scherzer fans took it only as a matter of fact I was playing in Bay in Japan at the time they were making that movie and Dennis Haysburg uh, who has a tremendous voice and we became pretty good friends were you in the movie no 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 I was trying to <laughs> they play didn't, they didn't off you apart <laughs> no no I think that's weak man you'd be good in that movie. <laughs> I had a job to do <laughs> here's Laporta one for two, single ground out. Two runs, four hits Detroit, no runs, four hits Indians. Scherzer giving up the leadoff single to Santana here in the seven. Ground ball away from getting out of this inning. Ball one.
Max needs that ground ball right here. And he needs to throw one or two more pitches and get out of this inning. One ball, one strike. That's a good area. That'll get you a ground ball. The Porter was trying to lift that pitch, and that's why he looks so awkward doing so. But uh, that's the area where you need to work if you want to get a ground ball to get yourself out of this inning. Mr. Baseball, by the way, the movie that starred Tom Selleck, who's a big Tigers fan. Yes, indeed. Always wearing the old English D. I didn't see him much. No? Uh uh. We saw him in LA a couple of years ago, didn't he? Yeah. Up to the booth. Tipped into the glove. One and two on Laporta. Lead off single by Santana. He is still standing at first base with one out. Surprisingly enough, Laporte is only grounded into two double plays this year. I would have guessed double digits. I was thinking that too. And the one two. Two balls, two strikes on Laporta. Jim would like to see Max get through this inning, not needing any help from the guys that are warming up. And because he knows he can turn it over to Benoit and Valverde in the eighth and ninth. Is a good pitch, and it's a nice job by Laporta, able to get a piece of it. 96 on the black at the knees. Five strikeouts tonight for Max, and again he has scattered four hits. The 2 2. Checked it. Got him. Strike three. Called out by Joe West. Six strikeouts for Scherzer. Two away. That's a good call by Country Joe. He didn't need any help. We'd still be waiting for that call from Tim <laughs> McClellan down at first. <laughs> what, what are you saying? <laughs> he looks slow. It what is takes trigger? a while. We'll see it tomorrow night. <laughs> yes, we will. Good living color. He should put one of his uh, strike calls in Fox Mo. Yeah, it would take a while. Scherzer has thrown 20 pitches in two separate starts this year. He's had 113 right now. 120 is his season high. And he gets a visit from Avila. One more big out for Max to get, and this will be exactly what Jim Leland and Jeff Jones envisioned him doing and going out and probably pitching in the best and the biggest game he's ever pitched in. And so far, he has really responded. He needs one more out here. It's Lonnie Chisenhall. Chisenhall is 0 for 2. And both times tonight, he's hit the ball the other way to Delman Young. Swing and a miss. 1-1. One, one. Santana let it off with a single, still anchored at first base. Fouled away. So it's one and two on Chiston Hall, the former number one pick recently, just a couple of years ago, 2008. Manny Acta's offense has been slowed tonight by Scherzer.
outside two balls two strikes. Well Blaine and waiting on deck. And the 2 2. Foul away. So Max is zeroing in now on that season high in pitches thrown. He's just two away. Two and two on Lonnie Chisenhall. And another foul back out of play. So we'll do it again. Comes pitch number 120 for Max Scherzer. Oh, or was it? Was that close? Must have been low. Oh, Country Joe. Where was it? Ooh, oh, ooh, Joe, oh, come on now. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he had a good look at it. Apparently not. Runner goes on 3 2 and it's fouled away. So Scherzer are going to have to try and pitch around that call. 3 and 2. On Lonnie Chisenhall. Santana again will be on the move here at first base. And a ground ball to first. Diving stop by Cabrera. Here's the flip. He is saved at first base. He pulled him off. Cabrera tried to get Scherzer the baseball. Scherzer could not hold on to the bag. And Miguel will complain with Tim McClellan. I don't know what happened with Miguel on that flip to Scherzer, but obviously he flipped it a lot higher in the air than he intended to do so. Let's take a look at it. Very nice play by Cabrera. When he tries to get up, he's spinning, and that's what happened. He lost his footing. He airmailed the ball to Max Scherzer, and a good call by Tim McClellan. Take a look at, at Cabrera's feet as he gets up. I mean, he's just spinning his wheels and harmlessly threw the ball in the area, hoping Max could stay on the base. You're right. Good call by McClellan. Foxmo shows he was off the bag. And Cabrera will argue to no avail. And that will leave runners at first and third. And Al Scherzer has to dig deep down now. As he will face Luis Valbuena. In reality, Scherzer should have been in the dugout with strike three. No doubt. Two pitches ago to Chisholm Hall. Well, they haven't ruled on that last play. I'm, I guess I'm going to assume it's a base hit because it was a sprawling play by Cabrera. Here's Valbuena now with the tying runs on the bases. Two nothing Tigers here in the seventh. And it gets away from Avila. Throw to the plate. Safe. Santana scores and it's 2 1. Outstanding job by Avila getting over to this ball and look how firm the feed is to Scherzer. Scherzer gets the glove down, but apparently he got in there safely. Barely. Oh my goodness. Well, they had a play. Looked like he got in there. Let's see on this angle. He is. Whoa. If he's safe, he's barely safe. 
So now the tying run at second base for Valbuena. 2 1 ball game. Swing and a miss. One and two. Shures are trying to reach back. Get through this inning. 125 is a career high. We'll need one more. Sellout crowd trying to help him a little bit. Get away from Avila, but not far enough, and the runner holds. And now it's two and two. Meanwhile, Brantley is waiting on deck. Thirty-one pitches thrown in this inning by Scherzer, but he should be in the dugout right now. With the score 2 0. Here's the 2 2. Bouncing ball, first base side. Cabrera has it, says, I'll take it. So the Tigers will escape with the lead. Scherzer, gunny effort tonight. Getting through the seventh inning. We'll go to the stretch. Catch regular coverage as always right here on Fox Sports Detroit. At the same time, on Fox Sports Detroit Plus, we'll provide isolated coverage and expert insight to all nine defensive positions and other key duties of players, coaches, and the manager as well. So make sure you tune in tomorrow. Special presentation on Plus as well, along with the game right here on Fox Sports Detroit. And here come the Tigers now. Tomlin back to the hill as we go to the bottom of the seventh. 2 1 is our score. And Miguel Cabrera hits the first pitch on the ground is short. From one Cabrera to another, one gone. And along with uh, our own Rod Allen, we'll have some guest analysts on the plus side to analyze all of the different positions. It'll be something a little bit different, partner. So it will be. Something to look forward to. Yeah, it will be a little something different. Here is Victor Martinez. Victor is 0 for 2. 
Indians have a little life now as they pick up a run against Scherzer in the top of the seventh. There's a ball inside to Victor Martinez. Joaquin Benoit is warming up for the Detroit Tigers. Indians have some activity as well. That would be Tony Sip. Yeah, back end of uh, the bullpens for both of these teams. They're really good. This is just the 84th pitch coming up for Tomlin, and it's ripped on the ground at first, but backhanded by Laporta. Two up, two down here in the seventh. The only blemish on the mark of Josh Tomlin tonight was the two run homer by Austin Jackson in the sixth. Now Perez is throwing in their bullpen. Here's the Vila. Get that run back. Alex Avila must have went up there sitting on something soft, and he got the pitch that he was looking for at 76 miles an hour, and he didn't miss it. Two in right field didn't move. That's that little slow breaking ball. He kind of slowed his arm action down and everything, and Avila timed it perfectly and drilled it. Alex Avila just hit that one 400 feet. Big, big run right there. Boy, is it. There's a drive. High in the air to left. Way back. Track. Wall. Back to back home runs. Ooh, they're teeing off now. Two out solo shots. Avila and Peralta. Tomlin has not made many mistakes here today, but there's another one. It's at 88 miles an hour. And Johnny Peralta lifted and separated and drilled it over the Tigers' bullpen, a souvenir for or those lucky fans out there. Tomlin going out of this ball game, back at the clubhouse, wall side windows, pitching change. We're coming back. The pair of two out homers, Avila and Peralta, and the numbers are complete on Josh Tomlin. 
six and two thirds, four earned runs, all coming on long balls. Didn't walk anybody. And he has that tremendous control, but when you have good control, you're going to give up some hits, and every now and then you're going to give up some big flies, and he did that today. He gave up three of them. Here's Rafael Perez coming out of the bullpen. He's got nice stuff, and he's got an outstanding slider. He's got that back foot slider that he will throw at the back foot of the right handers. At least that's where it ends up at after starting right down the middle. 55 games so far this year with a 2.20 earn run average he's been outstanding out of that bullpen oh max can smile now well another gutty effort tonight for sure is there a career high in pitches thrown and right now his teammates have got him a four to one lead avila peralta going deep stretching that lead here's wilson betemi Rounded foul, 0-1 on Benemy. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Line out, strikeout. <laughs> 286 this year combined with the Royals and the Tigers. Tigers now have six hits. Indians have five. High one ball one strike Johnny Peralta doing it to his former team Johnny has 18 long balls now Tomlin has given up 23 for the year with three more tonight High chop to the second baseman Valbuena Inning is over Tigers find some breathing room they stretch it out Avila goes deep Peralta right behind him. The Tigers baseball tonight is presented by Bell Tire. Top of the eighth, let's check in with Shannon Hogan. She's hanging out with part of the sellout crowd tonight. You know what? It is the second largest crowd at Comerica Park all season. And you can tell everybody's having a great time. I'm out by the statues. It's actually three people deep. I had to kind of waddle my way in here to make some new friends. This is Scott from Livonia. And I understand you guys always stand out here whenever you come to the game because there's really not a bad seat in the house here at Comerica Park. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a great view. You can see homers right in front of us. And it's, I mean, it's a great time. We buy season tickets and... We come out here and we stand out here. It's great. Well, a great crowd tonight and obviously going to be packed the rest of the weekend. Rodemar, I'll send it back to you. Yes, Shannon, thank you. And uh, it will be packed all weekend long. 44,222, the official attendance here tonight. The 10th sellout the Tigers 
have had this year as Joaquin Benoit takes over. And Joaquin has done some outstanding work in his last 35 outings. He has 30 strikeouts over that body of work, and his earned run average is under two. And that 3.88 earned run average just continues to inch its way down. 95 on that last pitch. He falls behind Michael Brantley. Two balls, no strikes. For the most part, Benoit will feature a mid 90s fastball and a tremendous changeup, but he has thrown more sliders into the right handed batters this year. Don Kelly now is the new third baseman replacing Wilson Bedemy. Here's the 2 0 pitch. It's in there, a strike. Four runs, six hits. Detroit, one run, five hits for the Indians. Benoit replacing Max Scherzer, who is in line right now if the Tigers hold on to get his career high 13th win. Driven in the air to center. Jackson is on his horse. He's got one of the quickest first steps in the league. Well, it's explosive. And it comes from his days as a basketball player. First couple of steps, explosive, and then he just realizes he's going to get there and he just kind of coasts to make the play. He's smooth out there. Shinsu Chu. Singled his last at bat. Waving a miss, 0 and 1. Been on base twice tonight. Walk and a single for Chu. Tigers two runs in the sixth and two in the seventh. They lead four to one. Fouled away. There they are. Masterson, Carmona, and Jimenez. The Indians' big three. Check the swing. 96 that time from Benoit. Tomlin, as well, pitched a good ball game tonight, but as you say, when you pitch the contact, every now and then you're going to give up some long balls. Indians have players on their roster from everywhere. Korea, Japan, Jamaica. The one, two. Did he go? Yes. Chad Fairchild says, Chew, take a seat. Ooh. That's close. Here's that dribble Cabrera. Oh for three for Cabrera. Ball one. Game two, Doug Fister for Detroit. David Huff for the Indians. Business, however, to take care of here tonight. Tigers lead 4-1 in the eighth. Benoit trying to get this one to Valverde, who is loosening up right now in the Detroit bullpen. And the 2 0. Swing and a miss. Boy, Cabrera looked like he had his mind made up. He was going to swing at that pitch. And he had a rip. Here's the 2 1. 
Outside three balls one strike. Should Cabrera reach after would be next. Three one high fly ball right field. Bosch going back to the wall and he'll make the catch right at the wall. Cabrera falls short. Inning over. A one two three frame. Here's our Comerica game summary tonight. Miguel Cabrera has extended his hitting streak to 16 straight. Max Scherzer, 10th start at Comerica Park with six innings and less than two earned runs this year. He was really good tonight. Jackson, Avila, Peralta each with home runs. Austin's was a two run shot. Avila, Peralta solo homers. You add it all up, it's 4 1 Detroit. New pitcher now, Frank Herman is on for Cleveland. He comes in with three wins and no losses in 27 games for the tribe. Earned run average at 4.81. Here is Santiago to lead it off. First at bat of the night for Ramon. Took over defensively earlier in the game for Rayburn. And Herman misses outside. 2 and 0. Perez came on, got the final out of the seventh. Now Herman here in the eighth. The uh, Indians bullpen has been doing some lights out work. There's a strike call, 2 and 1. It has definitely been a strength for their club here down the stretch. The 2 1 pitch. Popped him up. Cabrera for the out. Hey, fans, you can follow the Tigers with the MLB.com at Bat 11 app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, or Blackberry. Get live audio pitch by pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text at Bat to 31826 or visit Tigers.com for more details. So here is Jackson who hit the two run homer in the sixth. Oh, 
Austin's home run was his sixth of the year. And it was a big one. In fact, neither team had scored a run until that homer. Two and oh. Austin Jackson got the Tigers on the board with a two run home run against Tomlin. Tomlin was not giving up anything until he threw that 84 mile per hour fastball to Jackson that he absolutely drilled. Now they 2 1. Here is Papa Grande warming up. Right now it is a save situation, three run spread. That'll get back out of play. Two two. The count stays on Jackson. Must have made a nice play. Yeah, but he couldn't have caught it barehanded, but getting high fives from everybody. It was hit too hard. Three and two now on Austin. Waiting on deck. Bosch. Get back out of play. Talk about how well the Indians bullpen has pitched overall, but against the Tigers, they have a 24 and two thirds consecutive scoreless inning streak. Yeah, a lot of that uh, happened in that uh, last road trip over there. That real long game. And the 3 2 popped up. Foul ground. First baseman Laporta. Jackson is out two away. He's going to bring up Bosch. Looking ahead, you've got Hafner, Santana, Fukudome in the ninth inning for Cleveland. Tonight, pop up, strikeout, ground out. Tigers have six hits. Cleveland has only five. Is there anybody that comes out of a bullpen in the big leagues anymore that doesn't throw 94, 95? Not really. I mean, most of them do. Especially the back end of the bullpen. And it's gotten to the point now where your middle relievers have that kind of velocity. That's usually where Herman pitches. He usually pitches a lot earlier. Because they have guys like Smith and Pastano, Perez. They all are 95 and above. Sit throws hard. Two and one. There's Tony Sit. Maybe Brennan can turn around one of these 94 mile per hour fastballs. It's a good count to do it in. They're going to challenge him. Hits it the other way instead and rolls a single into left. Well, Brennan has his first hit of the night with two outs, a runner aboard. And on Delman Young. That's what happens if you do get the inside fastball and you're just a little bit late. It's not that he was trying to go that direction with in a 2 1 count, but he's a little late getting there. But because he took the proper direction with the hands, uh, that allowed him to drive that ball with some authority the opposite way. 
but most guys in a 2 1 count are not trying to hit the ball the other way. That's one of those counts where you kind of get a chance to let it all hang out. Ball one to Delman. A couple of fly balls tonight and a pop up. There's a strike called 1 1. Frank Herman. 27 years old. Rutherford, New Jersey, where he was born. Made it to the big leagues last year for the first time. One and two on Young. 40 games out of the bullpen last year for Cleveland. Center field, and that's going to drop. Base hit. Fukudome was playing too deeply to get to that one. And so Young is aboard, two men on. Going to bring up Cabrera. Hey Tigers fans, it's easier than ever to find the seats you wanted to sell the tickets to the games you can't make on StubHub, the official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of the Detroit Tigers. Go to StubHub.com and choose your seats today. Tigers now have eight hits. They keep the inning going, and here's Cabrera. He is one for three. And he fouls it away. Three ninety six with runners in scoring position. His first at bat tonight with a man in scoring position. And he's even better than that with two outs and runners in scoring position. In fact, this is the Tigers' first AB with a man in scoring position. Look at that play by Chisholm. Hall. That thing was loud. Oh, man. <laughs> like he got shot out of a cannon. LaPorta picks it up on the other end to end the inning. So Papa Grande coming in with a chance to save this one.
now for Cleveland as we go to the ninth inning. Tigers with a game and a half lead right now. It could be two and a half. The Tigers get three more outs in this game. Chicago four back, and the Tigers have their closer in there, Papa Grande. Well, he's been perfect uh, in these situations. 35 of 35 this year for his club, and the opponent's batting average is just 208 against Papa Grande. Saw Willie Hernandez here at the ballpark earlier, and he was on the field, and he and Papa Grande looked like they were having a really nice, long, pleasant conversation. Of course, Valverde uh, passed uh, Willie Hernandez earlier this year for consecutive saves. And so uh, he'll try and get another one here tonight. Travis Hatner will lead things off. And Santana then Fukudome. Four runs, eight hits for the Tigers. Indians a run on five hits. Hafner, two strikeouts and a ground out. Those three at bats coming against the starter Scherzer. Well, these three, Hafner, Santana, Fukudome, are combined 0 for 10 career against Jose Valverde. Past history does not guarantee future performance, though. Here's the 1 0 pitch, and it's outside. Two balls and no strikes. Papa Grande, majority of the pitches that he is throwing these days are just two seam fastballs anywhere from 92 to 93 miles an hour. Every now and then, if he needs to, he can reach back and get up to 97. He went. But that's him right there. Just well located fastballs at 92. Hafner is asking Country Joe, why don't you get a little help? <laughs> Call me Albert. Don't point at me. Two and two. Ugh. Just missed it. Three and two. On deck, Carlos Santana. Off the end of the bat, foul. Avila will chase it down and foul ground. Three and two. The count stays on Travis Hafner, leadoff man here in the ninth. Tigers lead four to one. Tiger live post game coming up after the broadcast here tonight. Get reaction from the skipper, among others. Hafner settles back into the box. Three and two. <laughs> Tiger pitching tonight has allowed just five hits. And the only run that Cleveland has scored tonight came on a wild pitch. And really the inning should have been over because it should have been strike three on Chisholm Hall and then the ground ball where Mick Miggy lost his footing. Yeah, that was a big play. It lengthened the inning, but 
Scherzer was able to get out of it with the lead, and then the Tigers tack on two more in the seventh on the back-to-back -back homers by Avila and Peralta. High fly ball. That ball's hit a ton to right field, but it's going to die out there right at the warning track into the glove of running by. One gone. I just noticed, and maybe you have noticed this before, but Valverde has uh, shaved that stuff off his chin. Hmm. The long one. Yeah, I guess I didn't notice. This is the pennant stretch look. New game face for Valverde. It's a cleaner look, don't you think? Look like you having a little trouble getting that two man two to come in now. <laughs> See if we can get any closer on his face. <laughs> Just a little closer. One <laughs> and zero on Santana. It's better than mine now. We need to get you to get started in spring training, and by the end of the year, you'll have a full beard. Can do it. No? Nope. Still have some spots. Santana hits a ground ball to second. Santiago has it on the edge of the grass. Two gone. One more to go. Here comes the crowd. Sellout crowd tonight, 44,222. Fukudome is the last chance for the Indians tonight. Delverde is looking for his 36th save. Ball one. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Popped up foul back out of play. One ball, one strike on Kosuke Fukudome. Don't forget tomorrow night, Doug Fister, David Huff. And then Porcello and Jimenez on Sunday, the day game before the Tigers hit the road again. They'll be traveling through Tampa and Minnesota in the next road trip. Good pitching staff in Tampa. Good starters. Yes, indeed. Outside, two and one. Mister watching the action right now. He'll get his chance tomorrow. The two one popped him up. Who wants it? Santiago and the Tigers win game one. Papa Grande does it again with a 1 2 3 9. 36 of 36 in the save department for Papa Grande. That is impressive. And so is the Tigers' effort tonight. Scherzer started it. Valverde closed.